All right, we've finally covered port IO access to configuration address space to my satisfaction. So now let's move on to memory mapped IO and specifically the PCIe con extended configuration address space. So if this is the compatible or legacy PCI configuration address space, 256 bytes, then the PCIe extended configuration address space is extended up to four kilobytes. So FFFC here all the way up to FFFF, sorry, three Fs, that's going to be four kilobytes. So we said before that the only way to access the extended configuration address space is via memory mapped IO, not port IO. And specifically, there is going to be a register PCI X bar, which is going to say the location where something should be mapped into memory. I've got this sort of old documentation from a 3 series chipset which I'm going to use because it has a nice uncolored diagram that I get to color myself. So what does this documentation tell us about PCI X bar? Well it tells us there is a register. There is a register PCI X bar that defines the base address for the block of addresses below 4 gigabytes for the configuration space associated with buses, devices, and functions that are potentially a part of the PCI Express root complex hierarchy. <sighs> okay, well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that there's some big, long array of 4 kilobyte PCI Express extended address spaces that when laid end to end, starting at PCI X bar can end up being up to 256 megabytes of memory mapped IO. So why is it 256 megabytes? Well, because at the very bottom you have the stuff for bus zero, and then within the bus zero you have the 32 devices. Within the device you have eight functions, and when, within each function you can have four kilobytes of extended address space. All right, so FF, that would be hex 1000, that's four kilobytes. Then four kilobytes times eight. Hex 8000 is going to be 32 kilobytes. And then that times 32. One and five zeros is one megabyte. So one megabyte to specify a given bus. And then 256 buses. So up to 256 megabytes when you lay these things end to end. And that's basically the way you should think of it. It's just a big array of four kilobyte at a time, PCI extended address spaces for bus zero device zero function zero, bus zero device zero function one, bus zero device zero function two, et cetera. And then for that, multiple buses all the way up to 255. Now, while that would take up a maximum of 256 megabytes, if the particular device wanted to actually address things up at bus 255, almost no devices are going to actually need to address things up that high. So there's a provision in here to allow it to instead, you know, cut this in half, use only 128 megabytes, and then consequently you can only access, you know, memory mapped I.O. up to the, you know, bus 127 or you could cut it in fourths and only use the bottom 64 megabytes. And that's basically just to save some of the physical address space so that you can reuse it for other memory mapped I.O. devices. Now when it comes to indexing into memory mapped I.O., it's going to look different from port I.O. So back in port I.O., we learned about this particular format and we said, you know, there's eight bits for the offset and there's three bits for the function, five bits for the device and eight bits for the bus number. But specifically, because there's only eight bits for the offset, that means you can only access hex, 1000, hex 100 bytes at a time, 256 bytes. And that means that's why port IO cannot get you access to the full extended PCIe configuration address space. On the other hand, the encoding for accessing via memory mapped IO has the least significant 12 bits usable. And that, of course, means you can access hex 1000 bytes at a time, four kilobytes, which is the full offset within the extended address space. And we can also see that it allows for mapping this above four gigabytes. So you can see that bits 35 to 28 can be used for the upper address bits. And all of these lower 28 bits are going to be assumed to be zero. So that means that, you know, back here, this diagram and this documentation was actually inaccurate and that you can actually map the thing above four gigabytes. So, but the nerd in me says, well, actually, it's not always the case that it's using bits 35 to 28. 
So it turns out that different CPUs, different memory controllers back, uh, you know, before using PCHs, they have a different number of bits that are used for the most significant bits of the PCI X bar. And I was looking at the core, the first generation core, and I couldn't find it mapped in the normal place. Probably a consequence of, you know, just documentation errors and stuff like that. I did find a sad PCI Express bar, the system address decoder thing, but because the bits there are kind of like not at all similar to these other ones, I'm not sure whether that's actually true. So, you know, someone either with access to the proprietary documentation or an Intel engineer will have to tell me whether or not that's just missing the standard PCI X bar definition in the documentation. So PCI X bar, PCI X bar, wherefore art thou PCI X bar? Well, it's typically at BDFO 00060. So again, other than the first generation core where I can't find it for there for some reason, probably just because the documentation got messed up when they were transitioning from the pre-core series to the core series. And as you may recall, BDF 000 is the DRAM controller. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, the memory controller is going to be responsible for setting up this big chunk of memory mapped IO. So now I want you to go ahead and do a lab, find your PCI X bar, and go ahead and access the extended configuration address space via memory mapped IO. Access the compatible configuration address space, the first 256 bytes via memory IO, and compare the results to what you see with port IO. So let's have you go off and do that right now.